everybody welcome back to the channel in this video I am going to show you how to get Windows 11 on unsupported hardware as you may have heard you need a TPM chip to run Windows 11 uh, Microsoft here's the reason for this Microsoft only wants to support certain hardware I understand it because that's less drivers, that's less time that the company has to put out for uh, labor, for programming, and stuff like that. So as you see here, I have the sources folder of the Windows 11 ISO open. That appraiser's DLL is the one that will not let you install Windows 11. Now, uh, I got to figure out which one it is here. It's this one. So if I, I'm going to open with I know I don't, I'm not opening it right. But in this code here, I'm not sure if I could find it. What happens is, there's other videos on it. There, there will be TPM in uh, brackets. And what happens with that is, when you do the TPM in brackets like that, on the code here, Microsoft patched their own operating system not to run on certain hardware. Now, as I said earlier, they did this to support certain hardware so there's not as much labor. Now, to a person that uses a computer every once in a while, they're not going to know that's what it is. So they're going to go buy new hardware. They're going to get it with the TPM chip so they can get Windows 11. You, you don't... This is... You don't actually need to do that if someone like me, a computer person, can figure that out and then install the operating system. So... This is an application extension. That extension will prevent you from installing Windows 11. So if, let's see here. I'm going to open with that. Notepad would be the best. So let's see here. And this is all the code the ISO is using. See if you look closely. I know it's all jumbled up over there, but I'm looking for the TPM. Okay, so now you saw the code. So if I scroll back here 
and I try to run this setup, it's not going to work because of that DLL file. But as soon as I swap that DLL file, I'll be able to install it. Now, this computer, which is my old e-machine, I know that it's not compatible to run Windows 11. So I'm showing you what happens when it's not patched out. Actually, I should say when you remove the patch. Microsoft, as I said before, patch their own operating system. Right? So I am going to get an error here saying, no, this will not work. Right? So uh, this is the default file that is in that I'm using right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the installation and it's going to the setup is going to remove the temporary files. Now, I got this information from another YouTuber and he figured out that anything with the code TPM on there prevents the Windows ins from installing on uh, certain hardware. So when I replace this file, I'll be able to do an update. Now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. This over here is the new file. All right, so I just replaced the file. But before we keep get going here, this one's going to look a little different. Notice the code is a little different. There's actually certain things that are missing you want certain things to be missing, especially anything to do with the TPM. This is how it's going to work. All right, so now if I go to setup, this should work. Now, you do not want to do the update right now because what will happen is, is the Windows update server will catch this and say, absolutely not. So now you click Next. So as of right now, it is working. See, I got this far. I didn't get this far the last time. So... Now I'm going to click accept, right? So here's, to prove my point here, is basically, I'm going to say it again, Microsoft patched their own operating system not to run on certain systems. I know I said they don't want to support it. They don't want to take a long time to support it. Now, what do I mean by that? I know I got a little into uh, into detail here when you produce an operating system you what programmers do is they basically create all the drivers 
the Microsoft drivers, I'm coming from a Microsoft programmer, they create all the drivers that could possibly be imaginable for 85% of the systems. That's why when you install Windows 10 on certain systems, the drivers are there. Picture that for trillions of computers. Okay, so when they put when they patched out Windows 11, instead of doing it for trillions of computers, they did it for billions of computers. Actually, a little less than that because now you take uh, people like me who have older systems who cannot run Windows 11 without doing this. Now, this is kind of new to me as well. So what they did is they came up with the TPM chip saying, hey, if you don't have this, it's not going to work. But as you can see, since I added that patched out DLL file, it's working. And there we go. So this computer is going to have Windows 11 running on the real hardware. That's what Notepad is for. That's why I use it. That's for programming. So what this particular YouTuber did is he removed all the TPM stuff. So he removed that particular code that says, hey, do not allow this. Now, this is not a bad thing to do. I'm doing this for educational purposes to show you how certain things work. But here is where guys in the business have to be careful because if you brought your computer to me, yes, I would want to do this, but for liability purposes, I won't because if you call... Microsoft tech support, they're going to go, hey, wait a minute, this is an unsupported system, you're kind of on your own. So, this stuff I will only do to my own stuff for obvious reasons. But as you can see, it is installing. Now, remember, with Windows 10 was a free update if you had a previous operating system. This is also free if you have Windows 10. Now, what it actually does, I know I stated this in previous videos, the license key is shareware. It acts as shareware. So basically what's going to happen is your Windows 10 key is going to be used in Windows 11. So if you just go buy a new computer, let's say today, and then you update to Windows 11, you already paid for the license and your license transfers over. Now, what I tried to do is I tried to find the file, the update file itself. And I was going to go through it just like this particular YouTuber did to figure it out. Because I wanted to know why, what is actually not allowing me to install Windows 11. Now, I, uh, there are a few different ways you could do this. The way this particular person did it was the easiest.
So by messing with the DLL file stands for dynamic link libraries. So with that patched removed, this will work. Okay, so it's been a little bit of time. We are at 79% here. And what's nice about this is you'll still get updates. But if you notice, the install here looks like Windows 10. Um, Game companies do this too. They'll recycle certain things. So it's cheap, cheaper to use something that's already there and modify it than to create new. They do that with games. They do that. Uh, animation studios do that with their animations and obviously software. So this is going to do the same thing as Windows 10. Right there you see the Windows 11 logo. It, that's actually called, I'm not sure if I stated this in another video or not, but that thing you see spinning around, that is called a pinwheel. go the screen is flashing and here we go so Windows 11 is now being installed on this system So hopefully the percentage will go to one.
soon. There we go. So this is working. All right, we are at 88%. It's been about 45 minutes or so. And as you can see, it is going at a decent speed here. This actually took, on this particular computer, this actually took less time to update to than it did on for Windows 10. We are almost there. We have two per actually 3% to go. And from what I looked up, it's going to do the same thing like Windows 10, where it says, hi, we're getting the updates ready for you. But this is going to have a really cool background to it. So you'll see that. And it's actually really, really cool. Yeah, so, and there we go. It's at 100%, as you can see. The computer should restart, which is what I'm hoping happens. Or it's going to go further on without restarting, which would be better. But I see why the computer would restart.
Ah, there we go. It didn't need to restart. Actually, I take that back. It is going to restart. It's just going to take a little bit longer than you want. Oh, no, it didn't. That's one nice thing. It does one less restart. See, this is the same thing as in Windows 10. Now, what's going to happen is there's going to be a really cool background that shows up. Just like Windows 10, if you look at the background, it's really, really cool. I wish you would have done Microsoft would have done this for Windows 10. Instead of the way they did it. But the way they did it is actually pretty cool, too. It's blue. Blue is my favorite color, so... I like that. Now, once this is done, just like Windows 10, we are going to hit the desktop. All right, here we go. So, just like Windows 10, it's going to ask you for certain settings. I'm going to turn that off. 
Uh, with mobile devices such as tablets, laptops, and all that, you could do Find My Device. All right, I'm going to click Next. Then it's going to obviously going to ask me to accept the terms and agreements. Every software that you use has that. So I'm going to click Accept. And there we go. We are at the Windows 11 desktop. This computer is technically unsupported hardware. But I am running Windows 11. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Settings. And I'm going to go to Windows Updates, and I am going to prove that Windows 11 updates will work on this machine. Here we go. So, it's telling me that this computer is a desktop, which it obviously is, and... You have remote desktop. This Windows by itself has a remote desktop button you can use to get in to your other computers. This is good for uh, networking in an office. All right, and I could do about this device. If you notice, the way it says about kind of looks like a cell phone operating system. And this is all the stuff that it, it that's telling me. And I can use BitLocker directly from here. I can rename the PC. I could do all sorts of things. So go back. All right, so the Windows Update button right here, I click that. And these are all the updates for Windows 11. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to download it. There we go, that is downloaded. And you could do the update history. So this is good for a person that may not use a computer a whole lot. You could go through the history and figure out where you had the problem. So let's say you install update two updates, update one and update two. You could go through there and figure out, go, okay, this worked when I installed update one, but it didn't work when I installed update two. And this gives the user the opportunity to uninstall update two and get the computer working again. That center one is going to need a restart.
So, all right. So, for the sake of this video, I'm going to restart the computer now. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave this alone. And down here where it says test, there's going to be like a power button off to the bottom right hand side there. So what you want to do is you want to left click that and you have restart or shut down. So I'm going to click restart. Now when Windows 11 boots, you're going to see a really cool logo. It's the boot splash screen. It's really, really cool. So once this restarts, there we go. There's going to be a boot splash screen you're going to see. It's the Windows logo that pops up. And it's very, very detailed. Or at least it should. But... So, once this goes back to the desktop, I'll show some other stuff. Well, here we go. Oh, no, I didn't do it. So hopefully it'll, the taskbar will show up soon. And then I can show you. 
other stuff. And there we go. So what I like about this is right down here is your start. So if I click that, you're going to see a menu pop up. still loading there we go so these are all the pin st stuff that you're going to use you have your to-do list you have whatsapp you have pick start you have clip champ which I'll get into in a different video you have Microsoft Edge obviously photo editor messenger solitaire mail calendar and all that but here's the cool thing you go to all apps and it's just like the way they did it in Windows 10 when you do this so this is a photo viewer this does come with Facebook Messenger which I do like and it comes with Office and all that so it has Wikipedia stuff and all sorts of things here so if I do so if I type CMD, for example, and command prompt, ah, it still has it. The version that I did in the virtual machine did not have the command prompt. So what Microsoft did is they fixed that issue for the final release which is what this is all right so the command prompt works so let's type Now, when that window shows up, if that window shows up, that means that command is still in there. There it is. So anything you need to configure Windows is still there. All right, so let's go online and see how that handles. Actually, I'll do that in another video. So anyway, with that said, that is it for this video. Please comment, like, subscribe, and click that bell for more notifications.